Happy New Year. Glad to see all of you. Yeah, so I'm Stephen Joroge for Stephen Joroge Solomon. And Stephen Joroge Solomon Kumajina. And Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. That's why I can testify that indeed he's my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. And uh, this morning I would like to share the word the grace to thresh mountains has been released. The grace to thresh mountains has been released. And I'll, I'll like to take a, a subtopic. We are work in progress or work under uh, construction. And uh, this year, we, 2024, is our year of threshing mountains. And as Deliverance Church International Ministry, the grace to thresh mountains has been released to us this year of 2024. We will face diverse mountains, but the Lord our God assures us not to fear because he will be with us and will help us. So for us, it's only to honor that word. We should not take for granted that each year we, we always get a prophetic word. But as we have continued to honor and to value that word, it has continued to work. And uh, our theme comes from Isaiah, Isaiah 41 from verse 14 to 15. And the word of God says that fear not you warm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you. Says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you, God is making us, God, I will make you into a new dressing stretch. With sharp teeth, you shall tame and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. So this is uh, the word of God that we have received this year. That God is going to make us into, uh, into, 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 in, uh, into threshing equipment that you thresh mountains. And make them small and make hills like chaff. And maybe you do not know how the year is going to unfold. Even me, I may not know how the year is going to unfold. But we need to know that God is in perfect control. And that's why Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 is always an encouragement. Uh, uh, that, that trust in the Lord with all your heart. And in all your ways submit to him and so as we continue to trust the Lord he makes our, our path straight and there is a story that is told of three trees a story that is told about three trees. And each had a dream. The first tree had a vision to be used to make a beautiful treasure chest. That would hold precious jewels. The second tree dreamt of becoming a mighty ship. That protected men from powerful storms as it sailed the seven seas. The third tree dreamt of being the tallest tree on the mountain. To be admired by many. As the story unfolds. Each of their dreams was fulfilled in ways they never expected. The first tree was made into the, uh, in, to, to a feeding trough for animals. Then the 
but but later became the major where G, the baby Jesus was raised the second tree became a small boat that was used by fishermen on the lake and Reta carried Jesus and his disciples to witness miracles. The third tree became a girl's tree where men were hung for crimes they had committed. And later became a symbol a symbol it later became a symbol to be used by every Christian church throughout the world. The Holy Cross. Uh, friends, we need to know uh, that God, uh, God has ordained all our days and has called, uh, called us to our destinies as our dreams and prayers are fulfilled in ways we can never imagine. And this is what the word of God in Psalms 139 uh, uh, verse 16 uh, reminds us. Uh, on time you can read from verse 14 but as we will just read verse 16. That your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be, I repeat that you are also my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So God is not surprised that we have come to 20. 24, the year of threshing mountains. But he ordained all our days. And were written in his book. Before even any one of them came to be. We are usually given a vision. But not the process. But we must be willing to release ourselves to be used of God and to leave God to do the rest. That is to work in us and even through us. Including working for us. Today you may be having a dream. But trust in the Lord. He has the plan. We have had politicians saying that they have a plan. But sometimes their plans fail. But God has a good plan for us. Plans to prosper us. But not for failure. Plans for a hope and even for a future. In 2024, be yielded to God by putting your trust in him. As we continue to make him our hope and our confidence. Because he's a good God. And, uh, and because we, uh, as, as I have mentioned need to know that we are work in progress. Or we are under construction. God is making us. So it's not a one day thing. But as we continue, God is continuing to do good and great things in our lives. And even through us. And there are four, five, five things that I need as, uh, as those who are work, work in progress or under construction that we need to know. And the first one, we need to know that we are weak vessels. We are weak vessels. And I would like we see Isaiah 41, verse 14 in the New Living Translation. Uh, and uh, the word of God says that though you are a rory worm, O Jacob, don't be afraid. People of Israel, for I will help you. I'm the Lord your God, your Redeemer, I'm the Holy One of Israel. So God is calling them not a worm, but a rory worm. Yeah, so, so, and a worm, 
is a symbol of weaknesses. So the Lord our God understands our weaknesses or even our challenges. Those that we are already in or those that we are going to get into as well as the mountains that are before us. Be it, the, be it sicknesses, be it uh, uh, financial challenges, including school fees, or, or our businesses, challenges in our businesses, or our workplace, or, or even our children. But we need to know that God understands our weaknesses, our challenges, and the mountains that we are facing, or we will face. But, the, uh, but we need to know who is our God. In Psalms 147 verse 5, the word of God reminds us that great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. You may not fully understand what is in your space. But you can understand our God who is great and mighty in power. And his understanding has no limit. And let's also see Isaiah 40, uh, verse 28. And the word of God here uh, 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 says that, Do you not know, have you not heard, that the Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary. I like the, the, the last bit. His understanding, no one can fathom. The, the meaning of the name fathom is to deeply understand. So you can literally say that his understanding no one can deeply understand. But as we need to know that our understanding but our God understands our weaknesses, our challenges, even our and I like this song that, that says that he knows my name. That he knows my name. Knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. So the singer sings and says that he knows my name, just as he knows your name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he asks me when I call. So even in this year of rushing mountains, we need to, to know that God understands that we are weak. But you can depend on him because great is he, uh, great is our God. Mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Uh, the, se the second thing that we need to know we have been assured that we should, we should not fear. For the Lord is with us and will help us. I will repeat, we should not fear. For the Lord is with us and will help us. And the help that we are getting, we are getting it from a higher power who is indicating that I will help you. And by the grace of God, I remember that in October uh, I ministered to us here uh, with a message which was entitled Help Like No Other. And I still base it on that Isaiah 41. And there are a few points that, are, that, that I was reminding myself. And we are talking about that help. We are saying that when that help comes, that protocols, protocols are bypassed. That when that help comes, the unimaginable happen. 
that when that help comes uh, the, the impossible is made possible when God's help comes it comes at that unexpected time in an unexpected way and comes with an unexpected blessing because even in the midst of the storms he gives us peace. And then we also uh, uh, saw that uh, there is no limitation to what God can do uh, when his help comes. There are no limitation to what God can do. So we should be glad that God has assured us that he's going to help us in this year. So despite the mountains before us, God is called commanding us not to fear. But one, one of the things if you look closer at the scriptures when God tells his people not to fear to, to restrain fear some pro, there is either as, as, some promise an action or a truth about God that is stated. Uh, I'll repeat that sentence, that to, to restrain fear, some, some promise, an action, or a truth about God is stated. And let's see Isaiah 41, verse 10, then, then 13 to 14. And the scripture here reminds us that, so do not fear. For I am with you. So the first thing that God is assuring us that we should not fear because he's with us. And then he's telling us do not be dismayed for I am your God. We thank God that we have a God and we know who our God. He remains the great I am. Then he assures us I will strengthen you and help you. He is strengthening us because he knows that we are weak vessels. And Lord, after strengthening us, he has assured he is going to help us. And that he will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then verse 13 says, he repeats and says, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your hand. So here is, is just reminding and emphasizing who, who he is. That he's reminding us for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand. And says to you, do not fear. I will help you. And then again in verse 14 that do not be afraid. You warm Jacob. Or, or you weak Jacob. Retro Israel. Do not fear. For I myself will help you. Declares the Lord. You are redeemer the whole one of Israel. So God is the one who is commanding us not to fear. Because he will be with us. And he will help us. And even in Deuteronomy 20 verse 1 to 4. We can see an assurance that was given to the Israelites. That when you go out to the battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you. Who brought you up from the land of Egypt? So it shall be so itakuwa, when you are on the verge of the battle vita, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. Na na watu. And we know that the, the, the priest in Deliverance Church International has spoken. Na kuhana, na ukobozi, and has spoken that prophetic word. Na lide neno la that is the ear of, uh, of, 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 of threshing mountains. Receive us ring. And he shall say to them, 
Hear O Israel. Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. And do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is, is he who goes with you. To fight for you against your enemies. To save you. So we should not fear because God is with us. He will help us and we fight our battles. Them that we know and even them that we do not know. And that's why I like, I like David. Uh, uh, David in Psalms 18, 28 to, uh, uh, to 29. This is one of the, uh, it's usually key and, and, and I love it. And this usually says that, you Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale over a wall. So here David, he knew that even when darkness comes, that God is able to turn his darkness into light. He knew that, we, we are, that when his, uh, his help comes, his help is like no other. And he knew that when God is with him, there is no mountain he cannot scale. And I remember uh, some, uh, 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 here, here some years ago, uh, the late Reverend Mwithi uh, told us of a story. And he was reminding us about a small girl who was with the father. And they were about to cross a bridge. And this bridge was shaking. And the father told the girl, my, my girl, hold my hand. But the girl said, no, daddy, I cannot hold your hand. Uh, so he told, me, he told the dad, you hold my hand. And the father asked the little girl, what, what is the difference? He told him, daddy, there is one thing that I know. If you hold my hand, no, if, no, if I hold your hand, and things do not go on well, I'll release your hand and I'm going to fall. But he told him, but, but one thing I know, that when you hold my hand, hand daddy, even whatever happens, you can never release my hand. And today we have our father. He's one who has assured us that he's going to uphold us with his righteous right hand. He's going to help us. He's the one who's going to fight our battles. And uh, I remember some time back, uh, during the apostolic visit in Deliverance Church Umoja, by then we were we Nairobi North. And Bishop Mark made a, 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 an example that I have always remembered. Na Bishop Mark akafanya mfano wabao na ukubuka hadi sasa. That uh, they, uh, they came, uh, they, they came to Nairobi. Nairobi. They wanted to go to, to a wedding of their, uh, of his, of his brother, which was the following day on on Saturday. So they they they, they took a, a, a KBS to Kawangware. And uh, uh, to them, they thought that they, they could go to uh, a place like uh, Kawangware and ask. Uh, Kwa baba furani ni wapi au kwa mutu furani ni wapi. Wakafikiri watafika pada kwa wangona ulizie kwa baba furani ni wapi. But his brother was not known. Lakini dugu yake hakujulikana pale. So they saw it was getting dark and they took the last KBS up to town. Waka kaona imekua usiku wachukua chukua buwe basi ya kurudi. And because they were young. Na kwa sababu bado walikuwa wachanga. The driver and the conductor took them to Kamukoji police station. Kwa hivyo yude driver kwa pareka katika polisi ya Kamukoji. They were not put in the cell. Waku wekwa kwa seri. But they were, they were taken to the uh, police canteen. They were given food. 
Wakapewa chakula. And later they were, uh, they were they were rocked inside there as the, the people went home. Na wakafungua pale wakati watu wengine walipoenda nyumbani. So in the morning the, uh, uh, the, the door was opened. Asubuhi yake mlango ukafunguliwa. And they were told go you can now go and search uh, uh, search for your brother. Wakabwa sasa mnaweza odoka mkatafute ndugu yenu. There were two of them. Walikuwa wawili. As they could see a, a wedding that a, a, a convey for the wedding. Walipoona msafara wa harusi. They thought that it was their brother's wedding so they could follow. Wa wakafikiria ni harusi ya ndugu yao kwa hivyo wakaifuata. And they, they found that it was not their brother's wedding. Time went until about 2:30. And they met with someone who was familiar to them. And they were asked, "What are you doing here?" We came yesterday for our brother's wedding. But we have not rocketed him. So they were told, even me, I'm going there. But the wedding is in Karioko. So they took the KBS. They were, they were reaching Karioko almost uh, 4 PM, past 4 p.m. So there was a lot of delay. So if God hold, in this year of 2020, 24 the year of threshing mountains when God upholds us with his righteous right hand we are not going to be lost I like it the way it comes in Greek yeah, because when you get lost you, you, you spend time and resources and because God wanted to teach me a lesson, I was driving at the Rosambo roadabout, and I was arguing with someone on the phone. So I was angry. And because my children were going to boarding mostly in Muranga, so I was used now to taking the, the, the route to Thika Road uh, to, towards Gedurai. But that day I wanted to go to Kayore through, uh, through Mweki. So I found myself, I've, I've gotten to the road to, uh, to Gedurai. There were vehicles be behind me. There were buses be uh, in front of me. And there were policemen. So I had to go to Gedurai 45. And that's when there was a lot of traffic there. Uh, turn and now come to Casta Mill, uh, go seasons and now go to Kayore. So I wasted time and resources. So my prayer for you and me, we need to be encouraged that the Lord has indicated that he's going to uphold us with his righteous right hand. He'll be with us. He'll strengthen us and he'll help us. Amen. The third thing we need to, to remember, the Lord is continually making or building us. So God, uh, God is always in the business of making his people. And the New Testament in Matthew chapter 4 verse 9. Verse 19, sorry. Uh, uh, he told Peter and the rest of the, uh, uh, the people who later became disciples. And then he said, then he said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Even in this year of 2024, the command is still the same. Follow me and we don't know what God is going to, to, to make us. It's going to make us uh, 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 instruments that are going to thresh mountains. Though we are weak, we need to remember that great is our God. Exalted in power. And there is no limitation to what uh, God can do. So in 2024, He's making us into be mountain threshers or to be landscape changers. Landscape changers. Or agents of change. 
challenges will be there in 2024 uh, but the grace to fresh mountain has been released for us as deliverance church international family so so let's see Isaiah uh, 415 a uh, for 15 in, uh, in uh, I need it in a e ESV if possible English ESV. standard version if it possible but it says uh, part B of it it yes. says behold I'll make you a threshing stretch new sharp and having teeth so it will be three things uh, the, the, what we have been made uh, we are made in, 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 we have been made into a threshing stretch that is new that is sharp and has many teeth Let's see Isaiah 64 verse 8. Isaiah 64. Yeah, so uh, in Isaiah 64, in Isaiah 64, when you look at it, it has a subheading. That a prayer for help. But let's, uh, this is what verse 8 says. But now, O oh Lord, because you see it was a prayer. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are Cray. And you are our, you are our Potter. And all we are, we are, we are, work, we are the work of your hand. So, because God is making us, even us, we need to appreciate. That, uh, that, that we, he is the potter and we are the cray. We are the work of his hand. And he's continued to work in, uh, in us. And uh, let's see Jeremiah, uh, uh, Jeremiah 18, 5 to 6. Jeremiah 18, 5 to 6. And the word of God says that then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel. Here, there, there we can put ourselves at DCI, the Deliverance Church International, DCIK, or DCKIZ. Uh, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord. Rook. As the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O, o house of Israel. So uh, we need to know that we need to know that God is continually making and molding us. Even in our current situation, the Lord our God is making us. He's working in us. Is working in us to thresh those mount, the mountains that are before us. And the fourth thing, we need to remember as those who are working in progress. That for us to, to become all God desires of us, we must cooperate with him. We must cooperate with him. Why is this? The Lord our God is the porter and we are the cree. Yes, we are operating under the grace to thresh mountain. But our trust and faith in, in God is what, what will activate this grace. We need to have a stubborn faith. Yeah, stubborn faith that does not give up. And uh, we need to know that we, we struggle not against the flesh and blood. But against the, the authorities, the powers of, of darkness, and, and the, uh, the, spirit, uh, the spirit of the evil in the heavenly realms. But in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18, uh, we, have, we have been encouraged to put on the full armor of God. When we put that full armor of God, 
uh, we know that uh, God is going to give us victory. It has of uh, it, it has defensive uh, it has of uh, or defensive and even of uh, offensive weapons. Uh, so in your own time it's good to look at those uh, at those. So let's see Jeremiah 18 verse 1 to 4. Here we are talking about that, uh, uh, that for us to become all God desires of us, we must cooperate with him. So, uh, so the word of God which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something uh, at the wheel. Verse, verse 4 is key. It's key. The vessel that he had made of clay was mud in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the porter to make. As it seemed good to the porter to, to make. That's why we need to cooperate with him. Because he's sovereign God. Uh, uh, and finally, the last scripture in that point is uh, uh, Romans 9, 9 20 to 21. Uh, the God says that, but indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the pot have the power over the cree? From the same ramp to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. So, friends, it, uh, friends, this year of 2024, so God is making us into, uh, into a, a threshing shed to, uh, to thresh mountains. But he expects us we cooperate with him. And we need to, to make him his trust and our, uh, to trust in him. As we continue to make him his hope, our hope and our confidence. Because he is a faithful God. And the, this song that goes, Bwana uh, Mungu. Na kuomba sasa unifanye kuwa kama upenda vyo. Kwa sababu ye ni muweza wa yote. God is, uh, is able to do all. Yeye anaweza yote. That that we can imagine and even that that we cannot imagine. Ababa ababa tunaweza pakari na tusio. So we need to cooperate with him. Even as he continues to work in us and even through us. To the honor and to the praise of his holy name. And the final point. The outcome is unimaginable transformation. Or there will be noticeable change. So when we cooperate with God, the, uh, uh, the outcome is an unimaginable uh, transformation. There are, there are no limitations to what God can do to have right that is fully yielded to him. So uh, right that is fully surrendered to him. So before we continue, let's see Isaiah 41, where we took the theme of this year. Uh, 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 Isaiah 41, verse 14 to uh, 16. Uh, that is a New King James Version, but I would like to read it in uh, 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 English Standard Version. And it says, Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I'm the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I'll make you into a threshing stretch which is new, sharp, and having teeth. You shall thresh mountains and crush them. You shall make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away, 
and the tempest shall scatter them, and you shall rejoice in the Lord, in the Holy One of Israel, you shall glory. So the outcome that we see there, Ma about it. Eh? that because God is going to, to help us, because God will be with us, is going to make, to make us into a threshing sledge, which is new, sharp, and having teeth. So we will be able to, crash mount, uh, to, to thrash mountains and thrash them. So I happen to have come in the first service. And Pastor Kibera was uh, preaching. And uh, he, he made a very good illustration for threshing. Which most of us can be able to identify with. And he was giving the example how uh, you are able to harvest the beans. And then they are like a mountain. And then you are able to take that stick. And now you start threshing. So even if that mountain is very big for, for the beans, as you continue to thrash it, it usually comes down. So we need to visualize that even when you talk about threshing mountains. And then after that, uh, verse 16 is, is saying that you will now win with them. Uh, uh, I think there is this thing which is called Nuteo, uh, Kataru. Uh, uteo. Yeah, so, so, so me, I, call, I call it in Greek, Kataru. The one that you uh, read, is, read, read is know it, the, that Uteo. Uh, uteo. So that, that's, that's the way now you come now. And when you do that, there uh, is separation. The unwanted is able to, to, uh, to fall. Uh, because it's blown by wind. And what remains is what is good and or what you needed. Uh, and uh, Pastor Kibera was reminding us that uh, even now, if you try now to reconstruct, uh, if you try to reconstruct what was there initially, it will not be possible because it has been uh, it has been uh, it has been thrashed it has been crushed made in fine particles there, there, there is now uh, it, it has been wind war uh, and then after that it has been blown by the wind that is the grace that we are operating with this year of 2024. So, so let's know that the grace to thrash mountains has been released upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And one great example I, I see of, 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 of a transformation because I've said that there is no limitation to what God can do to arrive that is yielded to him. Is the story of Paul. So before he was Saul, and he was a persecutor of the church. But after encountering Jesus on his way to Damascus, he was transformed and became very impactful to the glory of God. And many letters in the Bibles were written by him. So let's walk this journey uh, of Paul in a very few minutes. Let's see Acts 7, 57 to 58. So th this was when Stephen was being stoned and says that at this, uh, at this they covered their ears and hearing at the top, uh, op, uh, hearing at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the foot of the young man named Saul. Saul was there witnessing Stephen as he was being stoned. And now let's see Acts, uh, uh, the foreign chapter, uh, the next verse is that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Acts 8, 1 to 3, it says, And Saul approved of their, killing, uh, of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke against the church, in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered through Jude, throughout Judea and Samaria. God remained buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. Verse 3. But Saul began to destroy the church, 
going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. But now, in, in Acts chapter 9, uh, we'll see, uh, for, for, because of time, we'll just read from verse 8 to 16. So that's where Saul, as he was going to persecute the Christian, he had an encounter with Jesus. And he was converted now from being a Saul to Paul. And the scripture says that Saul, Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could, not see, he could see nothing. So they read him by hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on the straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Uh, 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 so that's what God, God told Ananias. But now we can see uh, Ananias trying to protest. And he was saying that, Lord, Ananias, uh, 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 Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. Uh, but the Lord said to Ananias, so from verse 15 uh, to 16, is, is, is very powerful. And this can be your story. Because God, there's no limitation to what God can do to a life that is yielded to him. And says, but the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument. Is my chosen instrument, just the way God is making us into instrument that will thresh mountains. That this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, to their kings and to the people of Israel. Verse 16, I'll show him how much he may suffer for my name. And as we know the story of, uh, of, of Paul, he became a great apostle after he yielded his life to Jesus. Even for us this year, as we cooperate with God, as we continue to, to release ourselves to the Lord to, to work in us and even to, uh, to use us, there is no limitation to what God can do in our lives. Even today, if you came to this service, or maybe you are listening online, and you have not made Jesus as your Lord and your, your Savior and your Lord, you can say yes to Jesus. And it can bring change and transformation in your life. That there will be, an, uh, uh, there will be a noticeable change. So, the, uh, so, so, so the, the unimaginable will happen. Because our God is not limited in any way. So shortly I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And he's going to change your story. Because he's the one who directs the show of our life. Because he's always in full control. Even for, for the rest of us in our diverse situations. God is able to come through, through for us. Because his word declares that his is greatness. His is power. His is glory. Spreader and majesty. So that is our God. So one thing, uh, as I conclude, we need to appreciate that God understands that we are weak vessels. And that's why the word is calling us Rory Worm, Ritro Israel. And you can put your name there. And God is, is commanding us not to fear. 
tuamuru kwamba tusiogo because he's going to, uh, he will be with us he will help us and fight our battles atatusaidia na vietu we need also to appreciate that god is in the business of making us tujue kwamba mungu aka katika hali ya kututengenea to make us to, uh, uh, the people he desires us to be ya watu ambao anatamania tu those that will bring honor and glory to his holy name and, and, and for us to become all that god desires of us na ili tufanyike kubacho bwana anatamania we need to cooperate with him lazima tukubali kufanya kazi pamoja naye as we appreciate that he is the potter and we are the clay na tutabue kwamba yeye ndiye msi ni udongo and and, and he, he, as, as a potter he is able to make us the way he seems right naweza kututengeneza jinsi atakavyo and the, finally is that after cooperating with god baada baada pamoja naye the, the, the outcome is unnoticeable transformation mabadiliko ni mambo ambayo yanaoneka there is no limitation uh, to what god can do to a life that is fully yielded to him hakuna kiwango baba bwana anaweza kuya aliyotolewa kwake we need to know that our god is infinite tujue mungu wetu ni kwamba he knows he knows it all anajua kila kitu because he created it in the first place sababu alituumba sisi Uh, we, we, we always be surprised and confused by what we don't know if we are honest if we are honest we don't even know our immediate futures and that's what james in james chapter 4 verse 14 reminds us that how do you know uh, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow your life is like the morning f- uh, fog uh, it's here a little while then it's gone what should this mean it should cause us to humble ourselves before god it should give us uh, uh, it should cause us to trust in god who knows our future and holds our future who works all things for his glory okay. we can trust our lives including 2024 and all our tomorrows because he's a faithful god so i don't know if you are there So and you have you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. You are just associated with him because he created you. But Jesus came that you may, uh, he, may he, he may amend the broken relationship between God and man. That's why he died for you. Oh, the word of God declares that the right, but, but Jesus died once once for all. Na Biblia inasema kwamba Yesu alikufa kutosha. The righteous for the unrighteous. But so akatifu. That he might bring us to God. Yaweza kutuleta kwake. This morning you have an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Sababu asubuhi hii unao furaha Yesu kwa mwokozi wa maisha yako. And as you face the mountains of 2024. Na unapokubana na milima ya mwaka wa 2024. You'll be assured that God will be with uh, God will be with you. Unahakikisha kwamba Mungu ata He will help you and you fight your battles. So if you are there and you lift your hand I'm going to see it and we are going to pray together. So are you there? Down here down here in the cathedral up in, uh, up, up in the balcony in the overflow or even in the tent. So 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 it's important that uh, we know that God directs the shows of our, the show of our lives. So I would like to uh, so if you are there raise up your hand and we are going to see it. Uh, so uh, even after this uh, if you are there and there is an opportunity. And even at this particular time I would like uh, uh, to Uh, request the ministry team to, uh, ministry team members to take uh, our positions and if, uh, uh, and if you'd like to, tr- to trust god you have heard the, the word and you, uh, if you want to breathe with someone 
that will be okay so the ministry team you can take your position ah tunaweza chukua nafasi yetu so uh, let me conclude by praying and then we we'll continue so that the service leader is going to take over from here our father and our god in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord for your word which is living and Lord, it's refreshing. Cause us, King of Glory, not only to be hearers of your word, but do us, Lord, of your word. That, Lord, you choose not to yield ourselves to you fully. And the, the, uh, there will be no limitation to what, Lord, you will do in us and even through us. To the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Be glorified and exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.